Morning guys. Okay, today in the simple cooking series, we're going to do a simple dish that uses rice. Something easy. Now, we're getting water from my grill. And I've got my Swedish M40 stove. And what we're going to be using to cook with. These are really good stoves for one person or two people type thing. And I really enjoy using it. I got my alcohol stove right there. Let's make sure that our surface is fairly level. It'll cook even. Okay, that's a little level. Alright, better. Now Real easy to use stove. And to me, it's one of the best military mess kits I ever come up with. Okay. Take your windscreen, fold up the internal legs, and you're just going to set it over your heat source. I'm going to set my pot in, bale going to the back, and I'm going to make about one and a, one and a half cups of actual rice. So I'm going to put in, for every one cup of rice, you put in two cups of water. So I'm going to put about three cups, which on this pot is about half a pot. Now rice comes in pre-cooked, dehydrated uh, rice. Those are the instant rices that you just, you know, 60 seconds in boiling water and they're back. They have a higher moisture content. But these bag rices are what you want for long-term storage because they're completely dry, ready to go. You just got to cook them a little bit longer. Now it's going to take about 20 minutes to cook this. And that's, got, that's fine, I've got plenty of time in that burner to do it. Right now I'm letting my water come up to temperature. That's going to take a few minutes. In the meantime, I'll measure this out. So that's going to be a full thing of this is a uh, whole package is five cups. So I'm going to take that into about a third is what I'm looking for. And I'm going to wait till my water gets boiling before I add my rice. Okay, that's one of the things that people will put them in and they'll sink to the bottom. And when they sit there, they'll, you can actually enhance your flavor by browning the rice in a dry pot. Put it in there and stir it around and then add the boiling water to it. That changes the flavor and you may want to experiment with that. But for this, I'm just going to make straight boiling rice. And I want my rice a little bit wet when I'm done because I'm going to be adding a meat to it. Now. What can you do with rice? Tons of things. But by taking rice, I can add spices to it, completely different taste to it. I can add vegetables to it, kind of like an oriental stir fry. I can add meats to it. I can add wild game to it. I can add stock to it. I can add, you just add and add and add. So in any long-term larder for prepping or whatever, you need a big supply of rice because it is a food source that I can add something else to and radically change the taste so it doesn't taste the same all the time. So if I brought rice to boil in chicken stock, it's going to taste like chicken, right? Beef stock, turkey stock, pork stock, vegetable stock, taking the bones of that uh, deer, cracking them and boiling them and then putting that in that, that beef stock, using this to turn it into a meal. Something simple and easy. Now for the meat today, we're going to be using canned pulled pork and barbecue sauce. So it's going to be barbecue and rice is what we're making. But we could easily make several different type of dishes all at the same time just by changing the meat. So let's say you've got a group of four or five people and 
you've got a can of barbecue and this person's got a couple of hunks of steak and this person's got this and this person's got that. If we made one big pot of rice and divided it up amongst us and each one heated their meat separately, see what I'm saying? It's a time saver. It's something that works fairly quick and easy. So, we're going to be letting this come up to heat and I'll be back with you in just a minute. Okay, now we've got a good rolling boil. I'm going to open up my rice. And I'm going to pour in about that much. Twisting the bag up. And you see how it instantly dropped down. That's the temperature change. Because it's, I've introduced something cooler into it. Now, flipping open my blackbird. The flap I got from that spatula I just made. There it is. Turn it a little bit, making sure it's not going to get stuck to the bottom. Let it come back up to a boil. Now see it's starting to boil a little bit. I'm going to put the lid back on. And due to this system of it being a... Um, I put that handle going the other way. On these Swedish stoves, this big opening right here at the front Heat comes out of that, and if you put your handle straight over it, it's catching that, and it heats up this handle. So put it to the back. In fact, I've notched my windscreen, so I'm putting just the pot in there, the handle goes back and keeps my handle cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my barbecue, and I'm going to put it in the top pot, because I'm a double boiler, and therefore I can do it this way and heat it up without having to mix and match it. Because steam heat is going to heat this up. That's the handy of having a little wedge shape as opposed to a spoon. You can get all that goodness out of those little bitty crannies back there pretty easy. Boiling good now. Right, I'm gonna set it up there and little little that steam evaporate because it did put too much water in it. Keeps it from boiling over. But that steam is still heating up that barbecue. Now you notice when you're cooking that froth, if I seal it up, that pressure goes up like a pressure cooker. And you may see it actually start leaking and running down in a stream because it's condensing. So keep an eye out for it and make sure it doesn't do it. Now, now, rice and something is just a staple in the old woodsman's camp. When I was coming up, you saw that a lot. Squirrel and rice, coon and rice, wild game and rice. If we didn't catch nothing, it was rice, you know. It was a way of filling your belly up with very little weight to coat in. So beans, rice, dry goods was a, a staple that we carried a lot. And it, it brings so much to your culinary because a rice dish of adding spices, add a lot of black pepper, add a little hot sauce, add a little bit of chopped up onion, add some 
wild things like uh, wood sorrel, things like that. Great way to go. And then you have a lot of dishes that you can pick up. It's just a simple boiling rice dish at Walmart or the grocery store that's garlic and butter, uh, herbs and such and such. Tons of those. Go look in your rice section. And that allows you to spice it up. So like this is going to be simply barbecue and rice. And this barbecue is getting good and hot now. Rice is thickening up really well. How do you know when the rice is done? Give it about 10-15 minutes of cook time for this type of dry rice. Then you want to pull some out, cool it off a second, and taste it. If it's crunchy, it's not done yet. There's a certain el dente softness, okay, of when it's done, and you'll know it. Just take it. When the rice is done, you just set it off to the side. Let it cool down, pour off any excess water, fluff it up, and then add whatever meat or butter or garlic or herbs or spices. That's when you spice it up. This is one of the things you need to become a master of is potatoes, rice, and other vegetables like beans, peas, things like that. You want to become a master of those and being able to make multiple kinds of dishes from the same handful of ingredients. Because that's also the way it is with baking. Uh, with flour, sugar, salt, and some sort of leavening. You can make everything from cookies to cakes to breads to rolls to cinnamon rolls to whatever just by adding or subtracting different patterns. It's the same idea. Am I making a fluffy bread or am I making a dense crust? Am I making a dumpling or am I making a cookie? It's the ratio of that simple combination is what makes that. We're going to get into that a little later on. All right, now most of the water. And actually this is going to cook quicker because me putting this lid on, that acts like a uh, pressure cooker. And it makes steam pressure build up in there and cooks it a little faster. And then we'll cool it down. You note the little spatula that I made is perfect for this. Almost, about another five minutes. Just getting there. And you don't want to scorch it. And if I had a um, simmer ring to put onto that transia, and that'd be the time to do it. I don't have one with me though. So we're just gonna roll it hot. Which means stir every so often so it don't stick to the bottom. Now the barbecue, and this is a uh, Carolina kind of barbecue. And there's different kinds of barbecue. There's a thick type like uh, Nashville or Memphis type, excuse me, Memphis type. And then there's of course Carolina which is vinegar based and there's Southern type which is ketchup based all kinds of barbecues. Mm -hmm. Now while we're waiting on this to finish up, let me remind you that today is Saturday and that next weekend, which is the first weekend in November, 5th 6, 7th, or 6, 7, 8, um, I will be in North Georgia at Watkinville, Georgia at the Georgia Bushcraft Gathering. I'm going to be teaching, a, giving a little lecture slash class on the kukri in the eastern woodland. So if you happen to be coming to that, I'm going to be there. And I'd love to see you. Come up and say hey. Alright, now we've reached it. That rice is out of liquid now. We're on the bike. So we take that heat off. 
Set her down a minute. Just let her sit and set. She'll coast a minute. And I want to put out my fire. So, I'm going to pick up by going in the side, pick up my heat shield and just take it off. See, a lot of people try to put their hands straight down on the top. You ain't going to do that. Now, I'm use that empty can to snuff it out. Yep, it did it. Now, let me get you in close and we'll take a good look at this. Okay. There's my barbecue. It's thick. Little chunks in here or there. That's what I want. Go ahead and tie that up. Put that with a haversack. Now my rice. As you can see, the water's gone. And that swole up. Now we just stir it to put air into it. Let that steam flow off. It's wet. That's what I wanted. Wet rice, not dry rice. Dry fluffy rice is good for some dishes. Wet rice is good for some dishes. In this case, I wanted fluffy rice, kind of wet. Now, I'm going to let that just sit and rest for just a minute. Don't be in a big hurry. By me allowing it to cool down just a little bit, I let those starches and stuff in the rice reattach to the rice. It'll taste better. When I add the barbecue to it, it will coat it better. Okay? So, we'll give it about two, three minutes and we'll start stirring it together. Okay. Pad the time. Now I'm going to pour my barbecue into my rice, just like that. You could put it on the side or combine it. I'm going to combine it. Now, if I didn't want to do barbecue, what else could I do? Well, how about chicken and rice? How about pork and rice? How about beef and rice? How about any meat I could come up with? And that'd be the time to throw in some canned vegetables. One of them small containers. In fact, let me add one right now. Okay, when you look at the market, you're going to find these little individuals of peas, corn, carrots, mixed vegetables, etc. These are great to throw in your pack for this right here. Now all I got to do is just pop it open, drain out the excess fluid because I don't want it. it up, dump in those peas. Now mix them in with it. Gives it a little extra pop to it. A little something extra mixed in. So now we have barbecue rice with a little bit of peas in it. Add a little bit of a different look. See? So, uh-huh. Yeah, you smelt dinner, didn't you? Here you come. Amarillo has showed up, of course. He's wanting his fair share now. All right, look. Here you go. That's what I'm having, barbecue and rice. You can eat some of that. Super simple, guys. All you gotta do is take rice, bring it to a boil. A meat of some kind to add to it. Spice of some kind. Add butter, add oil. 
add something like that. There are a thousand and one things you can do with this. This is very, very filling, going to stick to your ribs, going to give you long-term um, energy. So I can make a meal like this, especially on a cold night where I'm going to lay down in a little bit and I'm going to, you know, it's going to be cold in the morning. Rice breaks down, gives you plenty of energy over the long run, so this is going to keep me warm. This is stoking my furnace to keep me warm tonight. All the rice is perfectly cooked and has a barbecue flavor to it. And there's actual hunks of barbecue, so you hit. It's the subtlety. Good cooking is not normal. It's not a, a normal same. There's ups and downs of spikes in the flavor. So you hit a pea, that changes a little bit. You hit a piece of actual barbecue, it changes it. You hit a little bit of the rice, it changes it. I would add a little bit more black pepper to this to spice it up a little for me, but that's just me. Simple, easy, filling. Hope you enjoyed this, guys. Please leave any questions or comments below. And there'll be a lot more simple cooking videos coming up that we're going to get into actual getting a little further along now. Now we're going to talk about how to make things, not just combining ingredients, but make things like dumplings, chicken and dumplings, stuff like that. So we're going to get to get chicken and noodles, those type things. We've got more recipes coming. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.